Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. I have decided to do this reading as just a recorded transmission rather than doing the video with the cards just because I kind of want to have a bit more fun with how I was bringing this reading through and it's just how I was guided to do it. So the energy for today's reading was really about this soul purpose energy that we've been tapping into quite a bit since the Lionsgate um, portal has really been open because we are being so strongly directed to really tap into our soul purpose, our soul mission, what is true for us at this time. And so I was guided to just do a soul purpose reading for the collective rather than doing a pick a pile. I was just guided to do this one. So, and I really want to bring in some joy and some fun into this reading today. So we might have a little bit of a, a bit more of a, um, a light hearted approach to this reading. It's just how I'm being guided to work at the moment. Everything in my life right now, I am focused on joy. I am focused on how to make these experiences more joyful for myself and everybody else who's listening to them. So my whole purpose right now is that if it doesn't bring me joy, I'm not going to do it. And I love doing readings, but sometimes they can be quite serious. So we're going to have a bit of a play and we're going to have some fun with this particular session today. So the first few cards I've pulled, I've pulled so it's just sort of anchor the energy in for this reading. And we have the beautiful energies of the Akasha and the Grandmother of Jesus, Anna, which talks about seeding the light, laying foundations, the divine plan, and also really allowing your guidance to be divinely guided. This is this is how that word, um, the card reads. And then I have the Tree of Life, Magic and the Rattle. And these cards coming through here, I'm going to go through the, the overall energy, but there is a line from one of the books for one of these cards that I just want to bring through in a moment as well, because it's just so beautiful. And I don't always read the books, but every now and then I'm guided to go to the book to read one of the messages. So that is what I decided to do with that particular card for some reason. And there's a beautiful line that's um, that I want to share with everybody. But feeling into all of these cards here, it really is about laying our foundations. We do have laying foundations from the Grandmother of Jesus at the Anna card and also the Tree of Life. It's laying your foundations, allowing your roots to really be planted deeply, allowing your magic to be seeded. So this magic card actually came through in the reverse position. And so when I feel into that energy, it really is about where are you allowing life to kind of dictate how you're showing up rather than allowing magic to show up in your life and magic to guide you. And it's allowing the magic, the magic in the mundane. I, I really love sort of using that energy of really feeling into how can you make the mundane tasks more magical? You know, when we cook, we can bring more magic into that. But how are you bringing magic into the purpose that you are here to bring into the world? And also sometimes there's this guidance with the rattle coming through of that we don't always have to keep using the same tools and the same practices and processes we've been using, but to allow ourselves to lay down what we've been using, what we think we need to do and pick up something different, try something new. So that's really the energy there. But the cards line that I wanted to read and it says, let your roots and branches be aligned with your heart's longing. And I do remember this line of the heart's longing. I remember when I first heard um, someone really speak about the heart's longing and it was around 20 years ago when I heard it and it was from the beautiful writer, poet, author, Araya Mountain Dreamer, who you may know the book, The Invitation or the poem, The Invitation. And she, she had this beautiful, um, it was an audio transmission uh, called Your Heart's Prayer. And I don't even know if it's available anymore, but I remember getting this particular transmission and I listened to it on CD and I used to have it in my car on the, in the CD player in the car like years and years and years ago. And I listened to it on repeat and she talks about the heart's longing and how we trust the deep yearning that comes from the heart and having faith in the longing because what we see in longing is what our soul is truly desiring so when i read that line out i was like that just brought me straight back to that time when i was listening to these transmissions over and over again and i would hear there was a certain passage in this in this audio book audio transmission that she had and it was really about how we trust in this this yearning how we trust in the longing so one of the energies that i follow very deeply is the energy of the goddess Lalita and she is this goddess whose the anchoring energy is following your bliss so what is bringing you joy what is your soul 
longing for what is your heart yearning for what are you being guided to connect to this energy of bliss in your daily life and really trust that longing trust that energy so that's kind of the opening cards that came through just to sort of open up this beautiful container today for us i have no idea how many cards we're going to pull where we're going to go or anything like that we're just going to go until i get guided to stop so let's just see what else we need to focus on right now about our soul path our mission you know sometimes when we talk about this soul path and this soul mission and people can get really fixated on it needing to be a certain way like i'm following my mission i'm following my purpose and it can become very um stuck and stagnant and also very heavy and even for me i'm very um, i'm a capricorn and i'm a generator energy if you know much about human design and I'm very, um, I've been working for myself now for 20 years and I'm very um, structured and I am a very um, organized person and I like the routine. I've always liked the routine and now I'm just kind of like, I hate routine. I don't want to be in routine. I just want to be in flow. If it doesn't bring me joy, I don't want to do it. You know, we can get very, very stuck in the mission of this is what I'm being guided to do and this is kind of how everyone else is showing me how to do it rather than going, do you know what? There's rules to be broken. We're not here to follow these rules. We're not here to, you know, create something that feels like another cage for us. We are here to follow our joy and our bliss and our soul's longing. And so if that looks different to you than maybe what someone else is showing you how to do, then follow your guidance, follow that truth for you. But also have some fun with it. It's been my big experience lately of we need to bring more fun to our experience of this soul purpose, this soul manifestation of our highest journey and potential. I believe that we are here for mission and purpose. I truly do. That every one of us has a reason for being here, but that doesn't mean it has to be a, a business or a job. Your purpose could be something completely different. We are all here for a highly divine guided reason. And that may be to just bring more love into the world and how you choose to do that is up to you, right? So but it's following those threads, following those, those tugs, that heart tug of going, this is where I need to be putting my energy. This is where I am being shown my truth. So I invite you to really feel into that, journal into that. I journal every single day. And I love doing future kind of visioning. And I love doing gratitude journaling, all the different things. But you can also script your future self. When you're future scripting your future self, like leave room for grace. Leave room for ease. Leave room for, you know, life to surprise you. Leave room for the magic is the message that's coming through there. What else have we got coming through? Let's pull a couple cards. And we're just going to see. Oh, beautiful. I love it when I get my spirit animals coming through. <laughs> during a reading, I just feel, I just, I love it when I, I get mine personally coming through during a collective reading. So the three cards I have here are Reflecting Pool, which is talking about stillness. The Stag Spirit, which is leadership, which is one of, that's my main spirit animal. Um, is the stag and then also the wolf spirit which is family and when we look at the wolf spirit which is about that pack but the energy that I'm getting with this is really about the the story of the Cherokee story of the black and the white wolf and you know we all have both aspects within us but whichever one you feed is the one that wins right so it's like well which one wins and it's like whichever one you feed that is the the Cherokee um, this beautiful poem this beautiful Cherokee story but and I have that particular energy tattooed on my on my body um, to remind me that we always feed the light. We can experience the darkness, we can go into those spaces, but we always feed the light. That is what we're meant to be doing, is we're feeding the light. We're seeding that new energy into this earth plane. And also looking at this place of stillness. So I really feel into the, that wolf spirit of going, what are you feeding? Are you feeding the stress? Are you feeding the drama of your soul purpose? Are you feeding the heaviness and the density? And this is kind of the energy that's landing here. It's like, what are you feeding within your soul purpose? Are you feeding this belief that it has to be hard? Are you feeding this belief that it has to be done a certain way, that you have to show up a certain way? The one thing I say to people when it comes to manifesting your dream life and to um, really working on soul purpose in the business, because that's really where the energy is today, 
is it's not hard, but it does take time. So there is a difference between it taking time because it takes time to fully um, experience everything you're trying to create and to work with the energies and learn how to do things. And maybe you need to learn a new skill set. Maybe you need to create, you know, some some content. Maybe you need to create a website. Like all of these things take time. It takes time to market. It takes time to build a business and a following and, and a stable community and all those kind of things. It can take time, but it doesn't mean it has to be hard. And there's a big difference there. So what belief are you feeding? That's really the, the main message that I'm getting from that card is that energy of that, the black and the white wolf. Which side of that are you feeding? The side that says it can be easy, it can be joyful, it can be graceful, it can be spacious, it can be fun, right? Or am I feeding the belief that it's going to be hard, it's going to be and like tedious, because I fed that belief as well myself. Like I fed both of these beliefs. But when you look at that from a higher perspective and just say, if I focus on the joy, the expansion, the stillness, the spaciousness, the, the gratitude, the ease, all of these things, that is what expands. So what are you feeding in your beliefs, in your mindset? And then we have a look at this energy. I'm going back to stillness. I'm going to finish with the stag spirit because that's where I'm being guided to finish off that particular card is looking at the stillness there is this beautiful energy right now where we are being called into stillness and this is because we've come out of these crazy intense energies around the lion's gate around this full moon that we've had around all the eclipse season we've had before that there's been a massive influx of energy coming through and now we're being kind of called into the beautiful stillness and we do have the dark moon phase in the next few days like we are sort of in the the, the pre dark moon kind of energy and we're about to land in the dark moon phase before we get into the new moon and in the dark moon is that void it is the stillness it is the nothingness the void is the spaciousness where anything and everything is possible out of the infinite potential of the nothingness right and this is why the dark moon phase is my favorite sort of energy around the moon is because we are invited into complete and total stillness and surrender to invite in the spaciousness of the void. And in that spaciousness, it's like we can revisit everything. We can let everything go. We can choose a new path in the new moon every month. I mean, you can do this every single day. You can wake up and change your life at a moment. And I truly believe that it may take you time to get exactly where you want to be, but you can choose to change your life in a moment. But in this dark moon, we step into the new moon energy and in the new moon, it's like I can choose a different life. I can choose to let all of the old go. We, we go through the releasing in that dark moon. In the dark moon, it is full release, full surrender, full letting go. It is contemplation in that spaciousness, in the stillness, in the void. We are in that liminal space. We're at the crossroads of our life. And we can choose to follow the same path or we can choose the other. We can veer off. We can go down a different path. We can experience something greater more loving, more joyful, more blissful. This is the energy of today. It's like find the joy in the path, right? Find the expansive beauty in the path. And then that's that beautiful stag spirit coming in to say, be the leader. And in that particular energy, I'm feeling that, that be the leader of your life. Like we are the co-creator, absolutely. Be the leader. Stand in what you truly desire. Don't allow other people's perceptions of what is true to get in your way. Like stand in what you desire because you are the only person that can lead your life unless you hand the reins to someone else. And if you're handing the reins to someone else, then what are you doing? Right? If someone else is guiding your life, you need to pivot, change course, take back the leadership of your life. And it also could be this energy of you stepping into a leadership role as well. There is that that you could step into this leadership role but what i'm really feeling with this is what are you feeding are you feeding the dark side <laughs> are you feeding the dark side right or are you feeding the light side <laughs> i do have a very uh i'm just i'm laughing at myself with that because i wasn't meant to say dark side i was meant to say dark beliefs like right but i am feeling into that dark side um which energy are you feeding you know, just because, and I'm, I am going to go into this analogy now because it's there and I'm going to take it, just because you were born into a certain situation, right, doesn't mean that becomes your reality. 
we choose to honor the dark or the light. And we can choose to honor and follow the dark beliefs, the dark thoughts. And those thoughts are things like, this is hard, this is too much, I'm not good enough, I'm not gonna achieve this, I'm not gonna be successful. Um, there's never any money, the market's already full. It's a big one that I hear is the market's already overflowing, like it's already full. My niche market, by the way, niching, I hate, I hate niching. For anybody who follows me with business stuff and who's done any work with me, you know, niching can serve a purpose, but it also can really box you in. So, you know, you can go into that belief that I need to niche um, and that there's already, it's the, the market's oversaturated, that there's not enough for every, anyone else, like I can't get my foot in the door. That's just a belief. Are you feeding those negative beliefs, those dark beliefs? Are you feeding the dark wolf? Or are you feeding the light wolf? Right? And your history, where you were born, does not determine your future. And that has been proven time and time again throughout history. There have been people that have been born into complete and total poverty and with no hope, with no possibility of a future outside of what their beliefs would allow them to experience right that's that's how that's just you know that's how they would perceive it if they didn't have a different mindset but the mindset changes and it's like you know what i can create a different reality and that has been proven time and time again we can see this all throughout history people that have come from quote unquote nowhere and created massive impact in the world right and it's really up to us to feed those those beliefs those thoughts those patterns feeding the emotions that you want to experience i'm going to feed my gratitude or my bliss or my joy or am i going to feed something that feels heavy perfect example for me today i wanted to do a reading i was going to do a pick a card and i was going to record it as a video like watching the cards and i was just like do you know what i don't feel like doing it it felt heavy to me to do that. Now I can understand why, because I'm kind of having a bit of a free chat here. And if I, if I was doing cards, I'd be kind of obliged to pull more cards. But because I'm just kind of in a, in a bit of a riff right now, I can just talk about this as well. But I wanted to just do it in a way that felt joyful and expansive and fun to me. And I asked what would actually bring me joy today. So I decided to do a reading like this. And that is for my highest alignment and if I do something that is out of my highest alignment no one's going to enjoy what I'm doing anyway right I wanted to do a reading but I wanted to do it in a way that felt really soulful to me that followed my deep yearning to create something that lit me up and then also helps the collective helps people on their path and journey as well so how are you leading your life and what are you feeding they are these energies but also we do have this beautiful dark moon energy coming up so make sure you take advantage of the dark moon energy making sure you are taking time for that stillness for that void connection to really pivot and go is this particular transmission is this particular sorry not transmission i'm doing a transmission right now is this particular trajectory is this particular pathway exactly what i want do i need to pivot do i need to change course do i want to do i want to light the other path on fire when you work with hecate you'll know what i mean by that i talk about it all the time is that we light the other path on fire so we cannot turn back we have to follow the path that our soul is calling us to our highest and if you've never worked with Hecate before, she is amazing. We are working with her in September. We're going to be doing a full new um, transmission with Hecate in our Patreon membership because I just love Hecate so much. <laughs> I work with her a lot and I do a lot of, um, a lot. we do a lot of journeys with her. She's amazing. Okay, so let's have a look at what else we need to feel into for this reading. grabbing a couple cards here oh I love this I love this I love this particular deck and I love that particular card I'm pulling from a couple different decks here and then I'll give you kind of a full picture of what's going on beautiful so the cards we have here are the inspired warrior wings of light surface i'm gonna i'm gonna go deep into surface in a moment and then the divine masculine which is electric power electric and active power and because we are talking about soul purpose right we are we are going into this energy of our soul purpose and the first two cards coming through of wings of light and the inspired warrior 
the energy that I'm getting again is that we are following a light. Like, are you inspired by the thing you're offering? <laughs> are you inspired to, to do it? Are you inspired to create it? Are you inspired to share it? Are you inspired? Would you do it if you were offering it out, right? Because everybody that's doing like quote unquote soul purpose work or soul mission work, for so many of them, there it's it's looking at a business aspect. If what you are putting out doesn't inspire you, then it's it's going to be harder to battle. So I'm feeling to that inspired warrior. There are stages within any soul purpose business, soul purpose work, where it can feel like a bit of a battle, right? Where the warrior steps in and that warrior energy is just like, I've got to keep just moving. We've got to bring that electric power in. I've got to bring the action in that divine masculine action into this purpose. And sometimes we can kind of feel a little bit uninspired and a little bit heavy and it can just be like, oh God, I've got to get this done. Um, and we need to be inspired. So are you inspired? I'm going to say it the way I would say it to any of my clients. Are you inspired by your own shit? Because if you're not, no one else is going to be inspired by it, right? If you don't feel inspired by what you are creating, by the light that you are offering the world, then no one else is going to want to see it, to experience it. So feel into that for you. If you aren't inspired by the thing you're wanting to create or offer, you need to change it and bring it back to either you need to work on your soul experience of do some meditation, go into that, you know, that deeper journey within, come back to that place of center, come back to what feels alive in you, come back to that state of bliss. Maybe it's your energy that needs to change or maybe it's the actual offer, but really feeling into it of that I am, I am bringing i'm sending light out into the world it needs to feel alive for me to send it out into the world right i'm not sending i don't want to send heavy energy out to the world i want to send light and again using this video as the example of choosing which path for me today felt the most light on my kind of ideal schedule of what i want to create for youtube was it was going to be a pick a card i want to do a pick a card reading every sunday and i was just like it just doesn't feel good to me it just doesn't feel like light to me and I only want to send light out into the world. So why would I send out a transmission that felt heavy for me to create? So really feel into that and ask yourself, is it inspiring me to create this and put this out into the world or is it making me feel heavy and dense? Because if you're putting out content or you're putting out something that's heavy and dense, guess what? You're feeding that black wolf, that dark wolf. You're feeding the dark side. <laughs> Oh, we have, we, we like, we, we've got to have fun. We have to have some fun. We have to bring some light because this is, can be heavy work. Our spiritual path can feel really heavy. We can go through the dark nights of the soul, <laughs> you know, we can, we work with the dark. I mean, I work with the dark goddesses a lot. I teach about the dark goddesses a lot. We do a lot of work and, you know, I have my shadow work course, which is really heavy and dense. <laughs> And it's like, we've got to bring light to these things sometimes. We've got to bring the fun back into spirituality because it's not meant to be a heavy, dense path. It is meant to be fun. So that is my guidance for you with that particular energy. With the divine masculine, that electric power, again, going into that inspired warrior, it feels like that active power. What am I putting action towards? If you're not putting action towards something that brings you joy, then change it, switch it up. Bring energy and action to the things that light your soul up rather than the things you think you have to do to get somewhere because that's just never going to be there. And then we have this beautiful card of surface. And it's from one of my, I just absolutely adore this deck, the imagery in it, the way they wrote the deck is incredible. Some people may have never seen this deck. Um, the way they wrote it is incredible. The just, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful whole deck. But this particular card is actually one of my favorite cards in the deck. And it's talking about surface. And I'm going to read a little bit of this particular card out. And it says in the I'm looking at the spiritual meaning, not the earthly meaning. Right. So it says just below the surface of what we think is reality is the powerful dreamlike realm of imagination. It is from this world of pure creativity that everything comes to life, is built or discovered. Your imagination is not restricted to the physical or known world. It is unlimited, multidimensional, free and clear. Mind the treasures of your soul and let your true self surface. Like it's such a beautiful thing. But whenever I feel into this card, I see the card because there are these two images kind of on the card. One looks like she's beneath the surface. One looks like she's above, but they're both actually on the surface. It's just the way the imagery is done. 
But I always feel into this card of being also, there's that image that you see a lot. Um, you know, you'll see, you'll know the image I'm talking about is the iceberg. What we can see with the iceberg, what we can see on the surface is like a tenth of what's underneath, right? The surface, we need to go deeper. We need to mine for the truth. We need to get clear on our direction. We need to go beyond what we think the mind, the ego mind, right? What we think we need to create, do, become, and actually like get to the root of what it is we are here to be and do. We have to remember who we are, right? We have to remember what our soul journey is for. This is about going deeper into that experience rather than doing it in a heavy, dense way of like constantly feeling like the shadow work has to be heavy and dense. Shadow work can be fun and playful. And if you don't know that, then maybe you need to revisit how you're doing shadow work because you can play with shadow work. You can create with shadow work, do inner child work that's fun and playful, right? But same with the business, go beneath, get beneath the surface of what you think you are putting out into the world, what you think you are creating, what you think everybody wants of you, expects of you, needs of you, demands of you, what you think society is going to condition you to believe, get below the surface and actually get to the root core of what it is that you are here to experience in this lifetime. I just, this energy for me is like just, it's it pulls you down, it pulls you in, right? It's allowing you to, it says in the card, like mine for the treasure, mine for the gold that is already within your soul. And also then receiving the higher guidance, like at the very first card, the Akasha card, it's talking about your guidance is divinely guided, right? Is once you know your, your purpose in this world, and if you can truly surrender to the higher guidance, you will always be directed on the highest path. Always be directed on the highest path. And sometimes we can't understand why we're being directed or why we're being course corrected. But it is always leading us to something that is greater than what we can understand right now with our current mindset reality. With our current level of belief. Right? If we truly trust in our intuition, and if you don't if you don't trust your intuition, then go there. Work with that. Work with tuning into your soul's highest guidance. Bypass the spiritual bullshit that you know where we're kind of conditioned to believe again spirituality is creating new conditioning just fyi if you can't see that then you know maybe you need a spiritual wake up from the spirituality <laughs> community right but we are being reconditioned the spiritual community the spiritual construct is reconditioning us to a whole new paradigm and we need to break free from that as well right and there are so many layers to that that i'm not going to get into in this reading but with this particular energy, it's like allow yourself to get back to the core of trusting your soul's highest guidance. And I want you to really take that phrasing in, trusting your soul's highest guidance. That should give you a clue as to where you really need to put your energy. So feeling into that, how that resonates for you, how that, how that feels for you it is your soul's journey, your soul's path. We don't need to externalize our intuition, right? We do not need to externalize our intuition. Our intuition is in, in, soul is in. So hopefully that lands for a couple of people because I'm being really guided to just like pause there, reflect. Allow that to land. And then we have the listening card just flies out. Um, I don't take a, all the dropout cards unless I kind of am guided to take them because sometimes it's just a bad shuffle. My um, guidance has always been is that if more than one card drops out, it's just a bad shuffle. And that's how I teach um, how I teach about readings and stuff as well. But sometimes there's a card that just flies out that we just need to see. And that card is listening, right? And for me, I look at that card and go, yep, that's exactly what it is. Like, listen to your soul's guidance. Listen to your intuition, right? You can feel it, sense it, know it to be true. The more we trust that, the easier the journey becomes. And I still just, you know, we all struggle with the ego mind. We all struggle with things that are, 
that are going to try to distract us and, and take us off our path. Of course, that's going to happen. And that's why we have to do the work of the meditation and connecting back to our truth and our inner knowing rather than rather than looking at the external it's such an interesting energy here because i've just pulled these three cards and it's and i feel like this is probably going to trigger a few people as well but the message that's coming through so first we have coming to life and then we have coming apart and then we have field of dreams <laughs> and in these cards here i can feel these very very um beautiful flowing kind of energies coming to life is really this like to me it's a spark of inspiration it's a spark of like a new life we're creating something new we are we're we're building this beautiful dynamic of energy that maybe hasn't sort of been there before if i look at the imagery of this card like there's so much light in this card there's so much energy sparking in this card and it's coming from multiple sources so it is really like birthing something new and it's coming apart what I heard when I pulled that card was you've got to break up with your old sense of self. <laughs> so this isn't coming apart in relationships because we're not talking about relationships today. We're talking about soul path. So if you feel like this is, you know, going into relationships, it's not. We are looking at and it is it's break up with the old self, break up with that old belief of self, break up with the old identity of self. Allow yourself to come apart, to separate yourself and I don't look at separation in a negative way because separation to me is just an understanding when we look at you know the mind does try to keep us in separation but soul is unity that's that's just what it is right but when I do feel into this I feel into the separation for this is that we need to separate ourselves from our old beliefs to understand who we truly are which is the soul so we can come back to believe to that belief that there is no separation right but also when i feel into that it's like there is no separation from the spark of creation that spark of inspiration which is that surface card coming through again that energy there there is no separation in that we are constantly being inspired and we're constantly having access to downloads of new new ideas and new thoughts and new creations and all this beautiful energy but we have to be willing to receive it and if we don't receive it it's just going to move on to someone else we have to receive that inspiration but what i really feel with this coming apart card is that it is it's breaking up with that old sense of self breaking up with those beliefs that are holding you stuck and also breaking up with maybe an old business that or my old soul purpose an old idea that you thought was what you wanted to do but maybe just maybe you're being guided to something higher and this is coming from someone who, I mean, I've been in, I've been in my own business for 20 years and I've changed multiple times because I just follow my soul guidance. And if I get told to do something, I just do it. I don't question it anymore. I'm like, you want me to do what now? Okay. So I'll just do it. Um, I question it for a second and go, you want me to, you know, go online, which I never was online before. I had built my entire business in a one-to-one -one in person situation. It was like, go online. I'm like, why? And I just trusted that. So I might question it for a split second, like show me why, or show me the, show me the gift of it. Show me the, show me the next step. And I just follow that. Why did I go onto YouTube? Because I was told to go onto YouTube. I was guided to do that. My highest self, my soul knew there was a reason. There was a, a strong pull for me to do that. So I just keep showing up. I show up in my truth of what I am being guided to every day, but I had to break up with my old identity of how people perceived me, how people perceived I had to really um, go into this space because I always look at the shadow aspect of the self. And one of the things that I teach a lot about is that shadows aren't always bad. One of my shadow aspects of myself was my intuition. I believed it was bad. I had created a shadow around it. I had created limiting beliefs. I had created negative expert, like negative energy around my spiritual, quote unquote, spiritual gifts, my higher, you know, higher abilities whatever you want to call them because to me they're just it's just another phrase it's another kind of thing we're getting boxed into but i had to really come to terms with my intuition but that also meant that when i'm channeling i can't be in my intellect because intuition and intellect in, in our intellect our logical mind and our intuition cannot operate at the same time they, they work in two opposite sides of the brain so one is working at one time if we're channeling we can't generally have access to our intellect so I had to be okay with letting go of the identity I'd created 
around my, my IQ, around my intellect, which I was always perceived as very smart. I was always perceived as very intellectual. So I had to let that go. And that was really challenging for me because I'm like, if I'm not smart, then who am I? I'm still smart, but I have to be okay with the fact that I channel like most of the day. So my brain has switched into a different kind of capacity. But I trusted that I followed, I followed my higher knowing, I followed that guidance every day, and this is where it took me. So breaking up with that identity, that belief that this is who I am, that this is what I am here to create and be and do. And the old identity of self that, you know, maybe is keeping you really, really stuck in something that you hate. So feel into it and go, does the old identity that I have created for myself bring me any joy? Because if it doesn't, then change it. And then we have the field of dreams. And I'm not going to go too deep into that card, but the field of dreams is, again, we're looking at that spark, that inspiration that you can create anything. We do have these energies on this card. You know, there's all these beautiful butterflies and there's these beautiful fairies and I thought they were eggs. I don't know that they're eggs. I think they might be rocks. They might be eggs. But what I can feel with this is that it's again, it's like the egg is cracking. It's the seed of potential, right? The field of dreams is you have to seed the dreams. You have to still um, like lay the foundation so that you can have a, a beautiful energy to sprout from, to expand from. So in your, it's like that energy of, um, how would I put it? is that are you it's that there's a there's a beautiful passage from Kahil Gibran in the prophet and I'm just trying to remember how it goes but I can't remember it fully but it's basically like in what seeds have you planted your harvest like in what in what um seasons have you forgotten where you've planted your seeds kind of thing and it's called, something about in what unremembered season god I wish I remembered it off the top of my head but it's basically like have you forgotten your dreams have you forgotten where you planted those seeds have you given it the growth and the energy and the nutrients and everything it needed to sprout? Because if not, that's where you need to put your attention back or you need to plant some new seeds, plant some new intentions. So feeling into that for you, how that is resonating for you. Where am I going now? I'm going to go with these cards here. Let's get some more energy for this. I'm just going to get a couple more cards here. Just a couple more. And for those of you who are new to my my work, you may not know, but I, like I do channel songs a lot. Sometimes I sing them out loud, <laughs> but I won't sing them out loud today. If I'm in ceremony, I'll sing them out loud, but in this one, I won't. This is something that I hear a lot, and it is one of kind of my recurring songs because I do hear some recurring songs. There are a couple that I hear very often, and it's always to give a really, really specific message. And the song that I'm hearing right now is um, Journey to the Past. And for those of you who don't know where it's from, it's a it's a Disney movie, the Anastasia Disney movie. It was out many, many, many years ago. But it's basically, it's like, like I'm going on this forward journey to discover where I came from, right? She's trying to find out who, where she's from, what her roots are. And she turns out she's this princess you know but she grew up in poverty and it's basically like I'm going on this forward motion journey to discover my roots and the way I feel with that particular energy the way I'm feeling that song resonating today because it starts off saying like heart don't fail me now courage don't desert me and I, I could literally recite that song word for word I've like heard it that many times um but it's really going into rather than remembering the ancestral past, which we can do. But what I'm feeling into this is that moving on this forward journey, it's about coming back to remembering who, like where you came from, your soul, who you are as a soul, not as this human version of you, which is still really important to understand because that's part of your journey. But remember who you are and how you are here to experience and be in the world. And the two cards I pulled as I was like hearing that song was one is saying, transform the way you see, right? And the other one says, honor yourself. And so in these two energies here, it's really about, because in this card, the Boohoo card, which is transform the way you, self, the way you see, it's, she's got these um, moth wings over her eyes and she can't see. And it's really about that you have the ability to remove every, anything that's covering your eyes. You have the ability to remove the... I want to say the, the, is it the visors, that's the word that's coming through, but you have the ability to remove these things so you can see something from a new perspective, see it from a higher light. 
but also when I feel into the honor yourself card there's two energies that are coming through one of them is boundaries making sure that whatever you're stepping into you have really strong boundaries created at the very beginning of that and also honoring your self-care in the process but the the final message with that particular card is just honor your joy right honor your joy <laughs> i could not be in the more joyful energy today of just do what makes you happy because what's the purpose of life if we're not doing something that makes us joyful at least some of the time you know the world has enough suffering our lives will always direct us in enough suffering you know that's just part of our human experience so we need to focus on the joy and the light I'm just going to pull these final cards here for this and we have harvest which is gathering of blessings we have bright heart light which is open connections and we have angelic assistance which talks about divine guidance and loving support so there's two main energies i'm kind of there's a couple of main energies i'm really feeling with this but one of them is really feeling yourself is opening up to receive higher guidance opening up to receive the guidance you need whether that is from you know your higher self whether that's from a mentor whether that's from you know watching youtube videos or whatever it is for you right like whatever you feel like you need but allow yourself to be open to the pools you get to do the work you need to do that's one of the messages i'm getting and also to be that that light of in the heart space right so if you feel like you're still sort of holding on to some density in the heart then do the heart work go into the heart space clear it out mind for the gold that's in the heart but we, to do that to mind for the gold we kind of need to release the heavy emotions that are still holding into the heart space but also it says gathering of blessings and open connections is two words and it really does feel like this community kind of energy that's coming through but that harvest energy is that you reap what you sow so if you aren't putting energy attention effort you know action into what you truly desire guess what there's going to be no harvest and that is just the plain truth we can't create something you know we can't harvest something when we've given nothing to it we have to you know if you go back to the the olden times you have to till the soil you have to sow the seed you have to you know water the the crops everything has to have its season and its stage and it's this cyclical kind of energy and that is what a business is a sole purpose kind of business doesn't matter if it's a business business or a sole purpose business it's all the same and one of the greatest misconceptions that can kind of happen is that because it's a soul business, everything's just going to manifest for me. No, you still need to be in the energy of action, divine action, aligned action, inspired action, right? We are soul action based. I follow and soul tells me to do when I get that, that nudge, to, I get that message to say, do this now. I just do it. <laughs> I don't question it anymore. I just do it. Even if I'm kind of like in my humanness, of going oh i don't want to do that today right but i follow that nudge and i have to honor that as well when i get the guidance to say rest and i'm like no i want to do something this is my this is my human struggle i am an action person i always have been i like being in action i like the doing and i'm being taught very very strongly right now to be in the in the the nothingness to be in the um, the being state to be in the stillness the slowness and all that kind of beautiful energy and so when I get guided by spirit to rest I do that too I honor what I'm guided to do no matter what that looks like and that can be really challenging for people but if you get the nudge to say do this video create this piece of content um, step into this new realm do this download um, like you know whatever it might be and you don't honor that that is why things aren't turning out the way you're the highest possible path it's not getting there as quick as you want it to get there right because you're not actually following that soul guidance so that's really where it needs to come back to so we're going to get one closing message where are we going to pull this closing message from i am going to take it from okay so we're going to get two cards because i'm being told there's two cards that want to come through from two different so we're going to get two final cards for a closing message hmm. <laughs> i love using cards because they really just confirm everything i'm talking about anyway 
I don't believe in future predictions. I don't believe that that is, um, you know, that that's actually even possible because we all have free will and energy is always moving, right? So I don't believe in future predictions. Um, I love using cards and I love using all this kind of stuff because it really does kind of confirm what we've already been talking about or the path or whatever it might be. So the first card that came through is trust the niggle. <laughs> so it says, what is niggling? What is that niggling feeling trying to tell you? Trust the niggle. If your soul, it's like trust at the very, very beginning, right? What your soul is trying to get you to see, to understand, to step into, that is that niggle. What is the niggle trying to get you to do? Like follow your soul's longing, follow your heart's yearning, follow that thread. That will never lead you astray. And if you are still in that process of understanding ego versus intuition, then do that inner journey work. And if you want to know more about that, reach out because I teach about that stuff. And then the final card we have is the crow, which I love. I love the crow energy. It's one of my spirit animals. Um, and it says, I'm going to say this, this, the phrasing out of the book. It says, when you speak the truth and practice truth, Eventually, everything you say becomes true. <laughs> Your power to co-create with the truth is the universal law. Correct what is untrue in your life without judgment. Let the truth set you free. How amazing is that card? How amazing is that as the final energy? It's this beautiful, like when I work with the, the crow, because the crow is very um, present in a lot of the dark goddesses and they are all about uncovering our soul's truth. They are all about uncovering what we believe is our shadow aspects, which is actually our true divine, our true divine soul's nature, right? So I really love the crow energy, but feel into what is my truth. That could not be a more perfect card to finish this reading on. So I'm going to leave you with that. Um, this reading went way longer than I expected it to. <laughs> it would have been very different if I did a pick a pile or a, a live video card pull. So I'm kind of loving um, the way this wanted to come through like this. If you have any questions, by all means, pop them in the chat in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Like this video, it really does help us um, expand the messaging out. And if you want to book a personal reading, by all means, do that in the links all down below. And sending you the most divine love, beautiful, beautiful souls. And I'll connect with you all again really soon. Satnam.